Hello everyone and welcome. Today I would like to talk about the G0 GPS module. As you might know from my previous video, this is a companion to the L0 autopilot and it is meant to be mounted directly on top. It has the right hole pattern and it has the connector. What uh, I didn't mention in the previous video is that uh, it has a standard serial interface, so you can use it with uh, pretty much any autopilot that uh, can connect uh, over serial to the GPS and supports uh, U-Blocks uh, receiver modules. So uh, if you want to use it with your PixHawk or your DJI or uh, anything else that uh, can be connected to a U-Blox uh, GPS or for example an Aerodrone or a Bebop, you can use this module with it. We made uh, several decisions um, while designing this board that are very specific to increasing GPS uh, reception and decreasing or uh, increasing the signal to noise ratio. So one, there are two major impacts for a GPS that uh, cause the signal to noise ratio to be low. Uh, one of them is uh, multipath, so you have GPS being reflected from other objects and interfering with the actual direct signal from the GPS satellites. So for example, your uh, quadrocopter is sitting on the ground and this uh, board is very close to the ground and you get the reflections, they cancel each other out. Then you take off a few meters off the ground and suddenly your GPS start, starts drifting because it is adjusting for all the changes. Uh, you don't want that. Second uh, source of this issues is external injection of noise and uh, for example the STM32s that are used on a lot of uh, autopilots including the ELO they are uh, notorious and known for generating quite a lot of noise in the band where the GPS gets impacted. So we put a lot of measures in here to um, make sure that this noise is not being injected. So first of all we added ferrite beads on the power lines and signal lines. This uh, will um, like cut off the edge or uh, take off the edge of the signal and uh, decrease the amount of high frequency noise injected into the I.O. lines of the module. Second of all, we added this RF cam. This RF can, of course, gets a cap on top of it. Uh, when you receive the GPS, it will look like this. It will be all closed up. But uh, for explanation purposes, I left it off here. Another thing is uh, that uh, what this can is actually preventing is uh, injection of noise directly into the antenna feed. If you look in here, you have this solder joint here. And this is the stem of the... Um, of the antenna that uh, is connected to the GPS receiver module. And uh, you don't want to get high frequency uh, noise being injected into there, so that's what the CAN is for. Third thing is a large ground plane. So the ground plane is 50 by 50 millimeters. This is larger than a lot of other GPSs that are on the market uh, that you can buy off eBay or um, Amazon or whatever. And this uh, increases the directionality of the antenna, so you will not get as much of the reflection as well as uh, noise being injected from the back. Um, and uh, based on the data sheet of the tau glass uh, chip antenna or the um, ceramic patch antenna, the ground plane that they are proposing is a 70 by 70 millimeter. 50 by 50 is already getting closer there, but this is why we added the sleeves here. So a large ground plane also has the issue that when the rotor craft is uh, transitioning from one waypoint to another, it has to tilt. And if a satellite is only um, close or is close to the horizon, so the elevation is low, you will probably lose the uh, information from that satellite. So when you tilt this antenna, you will lose all of the satellites that are in that direction. This will cause the GPS to drift quite a lot 
because um, of uh, a lost and then uh, regained uh, satellites. So what we were trying to do is to not uh, cut out too many of those uh, satellites by uh, not making the ground plane 70 by 70 millimeters, which is quite large, but have tilted 30 degree tilted um, trapezoidal ground plane. So this way you will still have uh, the ability to see more of the antennas and also shield um, as much as possible. So there is a trade-off between uh, the multipath and the size of the ground plane and how many satellites you can see, how much you can tilt. So this is uh, basically what we settled on. As you might know, this GPS is not the only one that has a trapezoidal ground plane, but uh, we um, made one uh, uh, interesting change to it. Usually, if you buy a set like that, you have to solder all along here to make a good ground connection of the leaves to the ground plane of the main module. So we are providing this uh, copper tape that is a conductive copper tape. It, the adhesive on the back is also conductive. This is a special tape used for RF shielding. Using that tape, you can cut it into strips and glue the leaves to the main module like this. This tape would not be enough to uh, provide uh, proper mechanical mounting of the leaves to the main uh, body. So you still will want to uh, solder a little bit. But on the corners, these pads that you would use to solder the leaf to the main module are not connected directly as part of the large ground plane. If you were trying to solder the large ground plane, it will wick away all the heat from your soldering iron, making it really difficult to create a good solder joint. So we only connected it over thermals, so really short, small traces to the rest of the ground plane, making the soldering much easier. And it is the case here on this corner pad, this corner pad, and these corner pads that make the connection between the leaves themselves. So if you put it together, you get a cone that has 30 degree angles and has a good mechanical connection, good ground connection, good RF shielding, and good directionality of the whole system. So I hope you like it. And I think uh, this is uh, quite a unique solution for GPS uh, operations for robotic applications. Thank you for listening and have a good one. Bye.